Reading 5 from the Psychological Commentaries on the Teaching of Gurdjieff and Alspinsky by Dr. Maurice Nicole, Volume 2. Birdlip, February 5th, 1944. The Enneagram. 3. Shock. Last time, we spoke of the Law of Seven as being sometimes referred to as the law of shock. For anything to grow, to develop from one stage to another, stage by stage, in the right order, a shock is necessary. The place of this shock is indicated at the point mi fa, or place of the missing semitone. What example can we find of such a growth or evolution? or development stage by stage in the right order. We can find it in the evolution of a microscopical cell into a human being. This is definitely an illustration of evolution by stages of successive transformations. One thing becoming entirely another thing, or one thing belonging to one world, the world of cells, passing into another world, the world of man, by the double process of differentiation and integration. Realize that your birth stands far away, not merely in time, but in vertical scale, in the order of things, in the union of two minute cells, in a world beneath that in which we live, a world that is ordinarily invisible to us. But the law of seven applies to all worlds, to starry galaxies, to man and to cells, just as does the law of three, for these two laws are the creative and formative laws behind the universe and everything it contains on every level. They are ultimate laws in the sense that they cannot be reduced further, that is, to anything simpler. The law of seven demands the existence of a shock. We can therefore be certain that Since the law of seven applies everywhere to all things, in every place of creation, whether in the world of atoms or cells or of humanity or of solar systems or star clusters, the necessity for a shock exists, and that if this shock is not given, degeneration or death will take place. In the case of a cell rising by successive stages of the evolution of itself, into the world of human beings and becoming a visible person. There is a stage where a complete alteration of its inner arrangements is demanded of it if it is to survive. But you must study this for yourselves if you wish to do so. In this connection, you must remember that nine months of our time is 30,000 times nine months for the cell. Work out for yourselves what that period is. Consider this diagram. The intermediate stages of transformation lie between ray and C. At, let us say, the stage soul, something intermediate exists, something unfinished and useless. Each dough, the lower and the higher, is complete in the sense. They represent cleverer points, in the intervening notes, or you can think of them as resting points. But you can see how two danger places exist in this application of the octave to the evolution of a cell into a man. The nature of the upper one is easy to see. The lower requires some special but ordinary knowledge to understand. When you realize that shocks are necessary throughout the universe, owing to the fact that the law of seven is omnipresent, in the most minute, and in the most gigantic, you become aware that everything must either make effort to attain its right growth and development, or must receive a shock at the right time. Let us speak briefly about mechanical shock. Man receives a mechanical shock repeated at very short intervals. This shock is air. We accept the fact that we breathe just as we accept everything else without thought. Air enters the lungs and meets the blood. 
Here, two very remarkable trees exist with a vast number of branches and twigs. The blood tree intertwines with the air tree in the finest branchings, but without penetration, and an interchange takes place, something in the air passing into the blood and vice versa. This is the shock given to the first octave in man, that is, the octave of the transformation of food. Unless this is given mechanically, if, say, it does not start up quickly enough in the baby, then the physical organism is incapable of working. It cannot work because the shock it needs is not being received. Speaking from this angle, it is obvious that we are simply machines. Everything is done for us, and once started up successfully, we run a certain time. This shock of air is required by animals and fishes and birds. That is, we see the law of seven at work in them. Let us put up the Enneagram again and write digestive system, air system, and blood system, beside re, me, and fa, respectively. Now, the lungs by themselves cannot give a shock. They can only do so by taking in air. Nor can the air give a shock unless there is something to receive it. The air comes into the lungs, and then the most valuable part of it, oxygen, is selected and drawn into the blood stream, the rest being rejected, nitrogen and carbon dioxide. All created things work by shocks. Without these shocks, they would begin to die. Now, we are given a mechanical shock which makes it possible for the body to live, the shock of air. Why do we breathe? Can we live without breathing? Is breathing something mechanical in us, something arranged for us, something given ready-made? But there is a great deal in man not ready-made, not given. Man has created a self-developing organism, and if you reflect on what that means, you will realize that he is not ready-made. Up to a certain point you are ready-made, but beyond that point you are not ready-made. At the same time, you are capable of some evolution, some development, some growth beyond the ready-made or mechanical level. But since everything is governed by the law of seven or the law of shock, you may be quite certain that any further development depends on shock. That is, you cannot develop beyond the mechanical, given level, without shocks. Your body is working all the time as a machine, transforming physical food into higher and higher substances. Substances that make it possible for you to feel, to think, and so on. And it is doing this by means of the mechanical shock of air entering the octave of the transformation of food at a certain point between me and Fa. But the rest of you, by which I mean all that can get beyond the mechanical level, is not working. It is not working because no shock is being given in the right place and in the right way. One lives one's life just anyhow without the slightest idea that one has to give oneself a shock. And certainly one can live one's life in this way owing to the mechanical shock of air. But man is created for something further. As you know, the work teaches us that we are capable of giving ourselves two conscious shocks beyond the mechanical shock of air, and that unless these shocks are given, a man remains asleep and indeed begins to die psychologically. Man's real life lies in the psychological sphere, in the development of understanding, of feeling, of thought, of inner perception. If you think you are simply your body, then you make a great mistake. No amount of attention to the body will make it possible for you to give yourselves the two further conscious shocks which belong to the psychological side of you. Man is more than his body, or rather, he is designed to be more than his body. Let us take the first of these additional shocks. This shock belongs to the intake of impressions and the reception of them.
and the digestion of them. This shock is called the first conscious shock. In a fully developed and conscious man, three shocks take place. The mechanical shock of air, which is given, and two additional shocks, which are not given but must be created. All esoteric psychology is ultimately about the nature of these two additional shocks and the means by which they may be given, and they refer to octaves that potentially exist in man that can develop by conscious work. To change, to become different, to transform oneself, these two shocks must be understood and continually given to oneself in daily life. But first of all, the first conscious shock must be given, and a person in this work must begin to know what it means to give the first conscious shock to his ordinary daily life. Unless we know genuinely something about the first conscious shock, which is called the transformation of impressions, we cannot expect to understand anything about the second conscious shock. Impressions coming into the human machine are a food which constitutes the beginning of an octave. In the Enneagram, the left angle of the three-figure, or triangle, refers to the first conscious shock. The angle on the right refers to the mechanical shock of air. Now, air comes in on the right side of the Enneagram from outside as a dough, having the hydrogen value numerically 192. It undergoes certain transformations up to the point me. Let us indicate these stages in the diagram. You will notice that the development of the transformation of air proceeds to the point me, where the left hand angle of the three figure or triangle lies. It then stops because a shock is necessary at this point for it to proceed. But this shock is not ordinarily given. Something must enter here, just as air did in the previous example, to give the shock. What enters at this point is impressions. But impressions do not give the shock in the same way as air does, unless they are taken in consciously. The nature of these two shocks is therefore different. At the number three, the shock is passive or mechanical, but at the number six, the shock must be active or conscious. The latter marks the first place of conscious evolution. This is the place where we have to take life, which is incoming impressions, in a new way. This place marks where we have to transform all daily incidents, all relations with others. This is the place where we have to transcend our senses and the world as we see it by something additional. This is the place where we must digest everything that happens to us, where we must form psychological power that selects and on the other hand eliminates just as the lungs select from the air what is most useful and eliminate what is useless. We will speak more about this subject later on. But you will see that the Enneagram, with all its possibilities, will not work in a man unless all the conditions inherent in it are fulfilled. When you realize that the law of seven, or law of shock, applies to your psychological life, you will begin to see why it is necessary to make continual efforts in the psychological sphere. If one does not give these necessary shocks to the psychological octave, there will necessarily be a death or degeneration of mind and feeling, just as if the mechanical shock of air were not given, there would be a death of the body. Now, psychological effort, psychological shock, is of many different kinds. The receiving of impressions in a new way, not taking things always in the same way, taking in new impressions by directed attention, are some of the aspects that belong to the first conscious shock, which can be summed up as work on being and work on knowledge. <laughs>
When the work begins to act on you and is no longer merely a theoretical idea, when you begin to see how it applies to you yourself, when you see for yourself some of the many meanings of giving yourself the first conscious shock, which is roughly called self-remembering or being conscious at the place of intake of impressions from the external world, you will understand how many sides belong to this shock and how very varied it is. At the same time, you will realize what it means to live more consciously in the midst of life. And when you have begun to realize something of all this, you will look back on the way you used to live when you reacted to everything mechanically with something like horror. You will feel that you would like to have been able to live more consciously in your past life. You will begin to catch a glimpse of how you have lived and how you might have lived. The extraordinary thing is how beautifully it is all formulated in the diagram. How simply it is put when you begin to invest the diagram with meaning, with your own thought and understanding, and no longer take it as something on the board that you stare at. The diagram is all living, all full of meaning, and the words and letters and figures and lines are really sources of meaning once the understanding combines with them. It is like a map which refers to living countries, not the things on the map.